So today I'm gonna to be ISO last and press either three sets of four or four sets of three. One of the two. That was last warm up with 100. So then working weights are 107.5 kilos. It's early for me to be training, which is just a, one of those things, unfortunately, sometimes training cannot be the biggest priority. So in those circumstances, just need to do everything you can to minimize the negatives and maximize the positives. So I made sure when I got up, I drank plenty of fluids straight away instead of like taking my time to like gradually take it in. I'm not really very hungry first thing on the morning, but if you remember, you're not a puppy. Well, I'm not a puppy, so I don't need to be hungry to force myself to eat. But with that said, I had a little bit of food, now training, and I've got those with me. So there's a couple of scoops of protein and a mango monster. Together, they come to 500 calories. That seems like a lot for what it is. Nope, yep, nope, yep. Yes, 500 calories. So 240 calories for this, 240 calories for the protein. And then I've got some peanut butter powder in, so that's another 20 calories. So 45 protein, 75 carbs, and about three fat. So that is my highly nutritious food. Now let's have a look. It is three set to four reps with 107.5 with the isometric. So going down fast, trying to control, and then back up in contrast to doing a normal bench. But then working up. Do you see that? Just ripped. Um, this is the load. This week is like the last hard week. So it should be getting towards RP9, 9.5 on the last few sets. Right. That was tough. I think the squat the other day is take, taking a fair bit out of me, which is to be expected. Three sets, four reps, yeah. So at the first set, do we go up? I think I could, because that wasn't our P9. So this is day one of my training. Um, I'm running five days a week at the minute, so I do. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, rest on Friday, then Saturday, Sunday, rest on Monday, rinse and repeat. I like this setup because Mondays and Fridays I have the most work on. And so those days I don't need to be in the gym. I can just stay at home and work from home for the most part. And then my in-person, clients I see them on Tuesday Wednesday Thursday as well so it ties up coming to the gym with them so that's why I run it that way and then in terms of the specific sessions day one which is today is isometric bench well it's not always isometric bench that's just this phase so it's generally upper lower upper off upper lower so on a weekend i'm doing the bigger sessions especially the squat and deadlift session at the end of the week there's no one else around in the gym i've cleared off all my tasks for the week I can just come and train like have a nice time in the gym take as long as i need if i want to so that's why it's that setup as i say this is fairly early uh, to be doing this session Mm. 
that one was actually better than the first one. Still not the best. Um, generally, I tend to get stronger as the week goes, which is pretty cool. But I do wonder as well if it's because earlier in the week, there's obviously work and other stuff going on. So I'm not as prepared for training as I am later on in the week. So on a weekend, training is like the fun thing. It's the thing I want to go and do. So like get up, have a big breakfast, take my time, do a few bits of work, go to the gym in my own time, don't have to rush. There's no deadline, there's no time frame. I mean, I still probably, I still finish training at the same time, but I think it's the psychologically not having to. Whereas during the week, there is a time, time pressure need to get done in a certain amount of time. So I need to make sure warm up properly and quickly, efficiently, get through the session, get everything done. So like today, having the monster and the protein, having them now, so it means that I don't have to have something as soon as I finish. I can finish this, go straight into coaching, then get a shower afterwards and then carry on with the rest of the day because when members start coming in Jim's obviously going to be busy can't film and stuff and then it makes the actual training session take longer than it needs to um, even just equipment wise I don't want people to have a, to be having to wait to use stuff because I'm using it like the the gym is here for other people ultimately Well, I nearly lost my balance there. So with the lathens, the good thing is you're not using leg drive. So then it also forces you to have a bit of a flatter back. So it's more upper body. The bad thing is balance left to right isn't great. And given the stuff with my shoulder, I'm already a little bit uneven. So that's that, that's that bit. They're all fine, nothing particularly exciting. I'm gonna do dumbbell press, so I'll move this about. Now, same uh, isometric type hold. Um, I'm just gonna go check how many reps. The great thing about having a program is you know exactly what you're doing in the gym. The bad thing about having a program is constantly forgetting exactly what it said. So, we'll start off with the 30s. Nothing too crazy. Um, Looking at six to 10 reps at like an RPE 7.5. Again, with that fast eccentric, the pause and then back up. So this is not how I would do dumbbell press if hypertrophy was the main goal. Right. That was um, meh, whatever. Um, the reps could have definitely been a bit cleaner, I think. So I'll stick with that for the next set. It's three sets. Um, yeah, it's just not very exciting. I suppose not every session is. This is one of the sessions that's like, just do, just do the session. Tick off all the boxes. Don't sandbag it, but also don't be silly. So like I talked about yesterday, my, not yesterday, the day before, I'm making progress at a rate I'm happy at. And so the amount of training I'm do, doing is enough to make that kind of progress. So it'd be silly to change it until I need to. Like, yeah, maybe if I did five sets, I can make a little bit faster progress. But 
it might also be too much, might overreach, might end up getting injured, and more importantly for me, is it would bleed out, bleed out into other parts of my life, which are just as important, if not more important than this. So helping other people get strong is just as important to me as me getting strong. Oops, we're in out of the monster now. So, the major advantage of this when training is that it's delicious. Number two, just make these ones a bit better. I noticed as my upper back has grown bigger, when I come down, unless I make a big effort, it pushes my head a bit forwards off the bench. And it's not like I'm pushing my head forwards off the bench to get uh, less range of motion. It's just like, as my shoulders come back, it comes up. Anyway. That set was better. I actually start to feel that towards the end. Still maybe not quite, not quite the RPE, but my next jump up, so they're 30s. The next weight I've got is 42.5s. And although I can press them, I can't press them at the right intensity and the right style. So I would, assume, I would rather opt to stay with the lighter one whilst everything else is progressing well. Also goes to show that you can have like a decent bench without having to do silly weights on the dumbbells and keep the, keep the goal the goal. So the goal is to have a bigger bench. The goal is not to have a big dumbbell press. And like I say, I wouldn't do them exactly like this if the goal was just to get bigger. Which you'll see in a couple of weeks after competition because then I'll start training more hypertrophy stuff but still with a focus towards strength so it's slightly different hypertrophy just for hypertrophy's sake or hypertrophy slash accumulation specifically for strength is slightly different nothing like crazy but for example I'd want to increase my strength in like the five to 12 rep range. I wouldn't be too bothered about sets of like 20 plus. Whereas if I was training just for hypertrophy, anything from like five to 30, 35 reps would be a reasonable rep range to work in. So dumbbell pressing, not just sets of eight, 10, 12, but also sets of 15, 20, 25 and so on can be useful. They're also great for, so like a, a session like today, that's early morning. Hypertrophy type training can be more useful because you can adapt it a bit more. So say today, say I had to train at 5 a.m. and the session called for heavy squats. As soon as you've woken up, like your back might be a bit stiff or like not even stiff, but just not warmed up, through, not warmed up through the day. You've not got much food in you and everything else. So then going from waking up straight away to squatting four, five, 600 pounds or whatever, not always the best thing. But if you're training for hypertrophy, you instead could squat 300 pounds, or you could leg press, or you could hack squat, or something else, something else that doesn't have the same amount of spinal loading, still train your legs, still get the hypertrophy working, and then go on about your day and save the, the big heavy sessions for when you're a bit better prepared. But if strength is the goal, then you obviously need to be putting more weight on the bar, training block to training block, which, can be impacted when other things are a factor. With that said, let's do the next set. The other benefit to you know, being logical with your weight choice and dumbbells is that you can actually handle them and you don't end up like injuring your back or whatever to try and get into position. Oh, 
that's the one. Oh, so that one was at the right RP. I don't know how obvious it'll be to watch it back. I'll have a look in a minute. Um, but I can feel on this side, all of a sudden there's a loss in power. So I know I've hit the right RP and that makes it easier to know. So the target was three by three sets of six to 10 reps, RP seven to 7.5. So the first two sets I did 10. And the second, uh, third set, I think that was six reps, maybe seven. I don't know. But that's the target hit for the day. Main bits are done. And what's next? Next is going to be dumbbell front raise. Same thing again, and then triceps. So for dumbbell front raise, I will go with probably 12.5s. Again, same parameters, looking for sets of six to 10, RP seven, 7.5. This is like the accessory stuff to, to augment the main training for bench. So the main training being the three sessions with the, got the Larson's, the um, normal ISO bench and the uh, touch and go bench. They're the main movers for the bench. And then the other stuff is just accessories. I wasn't gonna bother filming this. So I was like, I'm tired. I don't wanna film it. Who cares, it's just front raises. I remember the whole reason for this is for future me to look at. And if I'm filming it, I know I have to do it properly. Not that I wouldn't anyway, but just as that thing psychologically. And I was like, what's the point in training if you're not gonna train properly? Like, no, that's wrong. Training still has benefits. If you're training for a goal and you're not gonna do it properly, then what's the point? So this, by far, is my favorite bench accessory because cause when you bench, so the, the landscape of training, you get lots of people that say that you don't need to train your front delts because they get plenty of stimulation when you bench, incline press, whatever. But that is the case from a hypertrophic perspective and again, getting big shoulders perspective. If you're already doing plenty of, of other work for your front delts, you maybe don't need to do more. But if the goal is a big bench, the goal is to have a big press, why would you not train the muscles that are involved in it? So if you want to have a bigger bench, most underutilized bench accessory by far is a front raise. So when you bench, the initial part of the movement there, this, this is this. It's this action here. You're using your front delts as part of that initial movement for the bench. So why you wouldn't train it just seems nonsensical. Now, you have different weaknesses in the bench, depending on how you bench, where your strengths and weaknesses lie, your genetics, everything else. It's three prime movers. Your pecs, your delts, shoulders, and your triceps. Loads and loads of programs include training for our pecs and triceps. Why would you not include training for the delts as well? Like it just, it doesn't make sense. Unless you're like, need to look pretty and have exactly the right ratio. In which case, fine, whatever. But just know that you're sacrificing kilos off your bench if you're doing that. And not just with the dumbbell. So you can do a dumbbell, barbell, cable, whatever. You can do them just to this height, which I find is most specific. So obviously benching, you don't go past there, but you can still do Full range as well, all the way. Full range, he says. Can't get my shoulder, all, my arm all the way up. Full range as well. I am just training the whole movement. Super, super valuable. Now, when I do these as well, you can do them different ways in different phases. 
So if you're doing more eccentrics, you might go a bit heavier, have a little bit of a swing to get up to the top and slowly lower it down. You might have it where you're holding it for a pause. You might have it where you try and do it strict. I'm trying to do it strict. I'm aware my body is moving a little bit, but I'm not using the momentum of my body to lift them, but there's momentum happening just as a counterbalance for it. And that's okay. Oh, that stuff. I really try and one second. <laughs> oh. I'm really trying when I do it not to shrug my traps and then use that pop to lift with my upper back. I'm trying to keep it all on mostly on my front delts. My front delts, they're um, jelly. I just feel like, you know, it's like, I can't describe the feeling. It's like they're screaming, there's just like discomfort. It's almost like lactic acid, but, but it's not. Um, they just feel uncomfortable now. They feel pumped. That's another thing, when your front delts get pumped, it just feels silly because they're such a small area. It feels like they're going to pop through the skin. And then, for me too, oh, this is quite unpleasant because, um, because my pec, I've only got about 10% of my pec left on this side because of accidents that happened a long time ago before I learned how to train. Um, this delt has to do a lot of what this pec should do. So that that's even more of a reason for me to do this of why I get such a disproportionate return. Training on a morning, I don't get through as much fluid as normal. So that's why I make sure when I get up to make an effort to get as much fluid in as possible straight away. So whilst I'm training, it just makes me feel overly bloated, which is a bit uncomfortable. One of the important things with nutrition is like making sure you feel okay. So I think that last set was it was either six or seven reps. Good thing about this is I can have a look later when I go to update my program. definitely above the RPE. That's another thing as well. When looking at the RPE and the accessories and everything, you want to hit the target. I feel like a little bit over, a little bit under, it's not the end of the world. It depends as well on the movement. So something like this, super good accessory, tiny, tiny muscle. So it will probably recover fairly quickly anyway. So it's not the end of the world to have gone like a little bit over. So next thing is going to be my shoulders. Next thing is going to be some push downs, and then that'll be it for today. So I'll move the camera. Last exercise push down. I like to do these single handles so I can come all the way up and down. I also like to push my hips back, have a bit of a hinge, so it forces me to pull my shoulders down as if it's like when I'm benching. Um, so, yeah, that's it. Same parameters as before. So when I do them in my mind, I'm trying to keep, keep my elbow still. In reality, it is moving backwards and forwards a little bit. A little bit of movement's fine, as long as it's staying the same each rep. Um, I'm gonna do two more sets of these. I haven't really got anything else to say about this. It's just getting on with it, and that'll be it for today. So then, tomorrow's session, tomorrow will be fun. Tomorrow I've got pause squats. Um, I, was, I like squatting now. It's, 
something I wasn't very good at, put a lot of time in, and now it's got better. So with that said, I will see you. Yeah, it is tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow.